Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello learners, welcome to today's lesson. My name is Stephen Kariungi. Today we continue with our topic in biology form 3 and that is sexual reproduction in plants. And our last lesson we discussed the types of and uh, the types of gynoecium and we saw that uh, we have two main types of gynoecium that is monocarpus and polycarpus. Polycarpus is further divided into two and that is apocarpus and syncarpus. So today I want us to look at types of ovaries. We're going to study the types of ovaries in a flower and basically we know that uh, the ovaries are the ones that bear the female gametes and those female gametes are the ones that will be later used for fertilization. So it is important to understand the types of ovaries that we have. Now these types of ovaries are given according to their position. For example, we have some ovaries that form above the receptacle. We have others that form deep in the receptacle. And we have others that form while they are surrounded by the receptacle. So basically, we are going to have three types of ovaries. And we shall start with the first one is referred to as epigynous. Epigynous or an inferior ovary. And to explain that, we can say that this is a type of an ovary that is formed below the other floral parts. The, the other floral parts are emerging above the ovary. So the cholera, the calyx, they are forming above the ovary. So in this case, the ovary is said to be inferior. It's said to be inferior because it is at a lower position compared to the other floral parts. So we can say that the epigynous ovary is an ovary that is located below other floral parts is located below other uh, floral parts and we can have an illustration of the same can have a diagram So this is an epigynous ovary because you can find that uh, the other floral parts such as the sepals are at a higher position. The other floral parts such as the sepals are at a higher position. The petals also are at a higher position than the ovary. So this ovary is said to be inferior. It's said to be inferior and is located at a position that is below the other uh, floral uh, parts. So we have this as an epigynous ovary commonly found in flowers such as the apple. The second type is the opposite of epigynous, and this one we call it the hypogynous or the superior ovary. And this is an ovary that is located above other floral parts. And this one is common, e.g. in hibiscus, hibiscus flower. So for example, 
if we have the stigma there, the ovary is here, the other parts are at a lower position. So the calyx is at a lower position and also the petals are at a lower position. They emerge from a lower position. So you can see that this ovary is somehow superior. So the ovary is at a higher position compared to the calyx and the corolla as opposed to this where the ovary is at a lower position. So here we can say that the ovary is a superior or hypogynous. Hypogynous ovary. And for example, that one is commonly found in hibiscus uh, uh, plant. Then we also have another example. We have another example that's number three and this one is perigynous. Perigynous ovary and this one is neither, higher, neither at a higher position nor at a lower position but they emerge around the same area with the other floral parts. So in this one we are saying that uh, the ovary emerges from almost the same position. as other floral parts. Or you can say that it is within the receptacle, surrounded by the receptacle. So we'll have an illustration of that. So we have the ovaries here, the stigma and the style, but the other parts are emerging around the same area. So in this case, the ovary is said to be perigynous, perigynous ovary. So together with the calyx and the corolla, they are emerging from almost at the same position. So there is none that is superior to the other. So we refer to that as being perigynous and an example is in rose rose flower has that particular aspect. So those are the two types of, uh, no, those are the three types of ovaries that we have. Uh, we shall see more terms that are used to describe the flower. So this one, this one is just describing the types of ovaries. Epigynous or inferior is located below other floral parts, other floral parts such as the calyx, uh, e.g. calyx and corolla. We have a hypogynous ovary. It's superior. It is located above the other floral parts. Then we have perigynous uh, ovary where it is almost at the same position with the other floral parts. It occurs uh, within or surrounded by the receptacle. Now, we have other terms that are used to describe the flower. So, terms used to describe a flower. 
we have terms such as a complete flower. What is a complete flower? A complete flower is one that has all the four main parts of a flower. So this part has the four main parts. The four main parts of a flower. That is, we have the androecium or the male parts. We have the gynoecium, uh, the female parts. It has the calyx, which are the sepals, and it has the corolla. So all those parts are there. So that flower is said to be complete. If one of the parts is missing, then that flower is said to be incomplete. Another description uh, that we use to describe uh, a flower, we have those flowers that we say that they are solitary. Solitary flower. And these are the flowers that occur singly. Something like the hibiscus. Yeah? You find the flowers are single, single. So we refer to that flower as being a solitary flower. In case, uh, in case the flowers are clustered together. That means there are many clustered together. E.g., for example, the bougainvillea. This is called an inflorescence. Inflorescence. Flowers that are clustered together. That's an inflorescence. But if the flowers are occurring singly, we refer to that as being a, a solitary flower. You may also find a term such as a pedicillate flower. This simply means a flower that has a pedicel. A pedicel is a stalk. A flower that has a stalk. That is a pedicel. So there are so many terms that are used to describe the flower. Some we have mentioned them before, like the staminate flower, the pistillate flower, we have also mentioned those. So those are some of the terminologies that are used to uh, describe the flower. We have also mentioned terms such as bisexual, meaning that it has both sexes. But we have another one that is unisexual. So if the flower is unisexual, this one has one sex that is either the male or female a reproductive system e.g. a popo a popo we say that uh, is a unisexual kind of a flower so basically we've seen some of the terminologies that we use to describe the ovaries and also some of the terms that are used to describe a flower so our today's assignment So the first question explain the meaning of a staminate flower and b pedicillate flower and then number 2 draw a well labeled diagram of an epigynous ovary and then lastly number three name the three types of ovaries uh, observed in flowers so we are going to stop there until next time goodbye <laughs>